Hi guys, Anvo here from Anvo and Ben's Antics, and yes, today we are outside. Why? Simply because it was too hot to stay indoors, and honestly, such a nice day that I couldn't resist. So if there are random gardening noises, and birds, and lizards, can you hear lizards? But either way, please excuse me, very sorry, still figuring this thing out with a new place, but we'll get there in the end. However, today is a very exciting one, guys. You would have seen in my last sewing machine tour, where I went through all my machines I was packing up while I was moving, I included this one, which is my new and currently only machine I have access to. So this machine, guys, is a Genoma XL2. I have managed to date her to about 1975, very roughly. They were only really made between 1970 and 1980. I am reasonably sure this one is in 1975 due to the sum of the details on the case. It says on one of her stickers that she was made in Tokyo, Japan. And honestly, isn't she awesome? <laughs> now, this machine was released at an interesting time in Genome's history. It was actually released under the name New Home 900 in places like the UK where they hadn't actually changed the name from New Home to Genome yet. These machines were the first machines that Genome released with a built-in cam system, which means that there's actually no changing of those silly little discs that I had in my other vintage Genome that I tried to unbox when I made Martin's stocking for Christmas. The other interesting thing about it is even though it was made in the 1970s, it is almost completely made of metal, with the only plastic thing actually being the extension table and the case itself. And talking of the case, it also had these leather inserts in it, which I think are purely for decoration, and it also has a leather handle and that is just so 1970s just a very retro style if i had a postmodern home it would fit right in now this machine was actually brought off the facebook marketplace by ben in australia so that i would have something to sew with when i arrived here because if any of you don't know i am originally from the uk and i have been here all of three to four weeks at this point <laughs> we actually did heavily debate on getting a brand new machine and there was actually a singer industrial gray one for sale at half price in a big sewing store over here which we did look at several times but after reading all the reviews it just didn't seem like my cup of tea. Thing is I just really like vintage machines and my main machine has always been a genome so when I saw this one come up for sale on Facebook marketplace I sent it straight over to Ben and we jumped at the chance to grab her and sadly because it was a present Ben will not tell me how much he paid for it though I don't think it was that much but I have to say that just by browsing the Facebook marketplace I think secondhand sewing machines are a lot more expensive over in Australia considering all the free ones that I got in the UK or the ones I picked up like 20 bucks. Definitely don't think that happened over here anytime soon. However, when Ben went to pick it up, I did ask him to have a conversation with the person selling it just about the machine's history because I always think it's a little bit interesting to kind of record the history of these machines. And essentially, the lady who was selling it, this machine belonged to her grandmother who had sadly passed away, which seems to be a very common story with nearly all of my machines that I have managed to acquire is that the grandma sews and had all these fancy stuff and the next generation down just didn't really want it. Her grandma was originally from Australia and actually brought this machine in Oz. She then actually immigrated to Sweden for quite a few years and this was one of the few things she took with her before eventually returning to Australia to raise her family and that's where it's been ever since. So this machine has also travelled internationally which again seems to be a very common occurrence for machines that are kept in good nick as they seem to have gone all over the place. Now this machine is actually quite unique. One of my favourite features of it is that it stores all of its feet in this top compartment just here which I've never seen before and I think it is a genius idea that we should definitely be using a lot of machines because it is way easier to grab the feet out of here than it is to fiddle around with this thing that's in front of the bobbin and it's just a massive bath. Talking of the bobbin now, this machine actually has a see-through plate so that you can see into the bobbin for when you're changing it. This machine actually has a front-loading bobbin, kind of similar to the design that Vanita uses today. Do you know me? You clearly didn't stick with this, which is a shame because personally, front-loading bobbins I actually find easier to use, but it's personal preference. I suppose there must be a reason they went with the top ones and that's because more people like them. All the feet are kept in this top compartment in unique shaped slots so that they don't roll around and get all mixed together. This is also really handy because it means that everything has a place and it's just good. I really really like it. I can't emphasize how much if I ever have to design a sewing machine this feature is definitely going in. I also can't emphasize how heavy this machine is and how surprised I am by that. I mean it's not on the same level as like my Victorian cast irons which just need a whole other category all to themselves but it's certainly not like to lug around. And if you need even more room when traveling the top of the case here actually comes off and you have all these storage slots in the top. You've got some poke up reels for bobbins. You've got a couple of things in here that I've just chucked in, some of it original. I haven't really gone through this machine yet, which is the whole point of this video. Again, quite a unique feature in a case that I can't say that I've seen before. Absolutely perfect for bobbins, thread, and whatever else you want to fit in there. Though I have to say, the one thing this machine seems quite short on is bobbins. Thankfully, I'm fairly confident that a modern day Genomi bobbin is going to fit in this absolutely fine, but if it doesn't, I only have two to work with. It'll be fine. Talking of interesting things it comes with, some of the feet that it comes with look very interesting. Now, I've actually managed to 
find a online downloadable manual for this sewing machine because unfortunately it didn't come with its original paper one and we're going to go through and have a look at what everything is this manual though is about 60 pages long and i've got to be honest i don't really want to read it cover to cover so we're going to flick through and find the interesting bits so i am just reading through the manual and it was like oh well you can get instructions for how to do all the stitches on the machine itself and i realized that where the feet sit if you put down the first one there's actually a list of all the different stitches and all the things you need to use them you have what tension you have where the dial should be set you have what foot you should be using and honestly that is genius and i really really like it i've never seen this on a machine before again if i ever design a sewing machine i think i would definitely include this because it is just so handy to have and means that you are never going to lose it okay so feet that come with the machine for a you have your normal everyday sewing foot which is currently on the machine itself for b you have this which is an applique foot which i've never used before but i'm very excited to give it a try for c we have a cording foot which i think is really really cool Cool. again i've never actually used one but it looks interesting and i just read the instructions for it and it doesn't seem that hard d we have a button sewing foot which i feel like i have owned one of these for many years and again just never used it before so it'll be interesting to give this one a go and to go along with the button foot we have e which is a buttonhole foot which has to be the most unique buttonhole foot i think i've seen it's actually got metal runners on the bottom as well which is kind of cool certainly nothing like the modern day long ones that you get but i suppose it's gotta work somehow f is a nice easy one that i am very familiar with it is a rolled hemming foot quite a small one as well so i'm not sure how it's going to go with larger fabrics which is what i tend to use but it's still handy to have and we'll figure something out for it g is called a tricon foot which i have neither used nor heard of before so um yeah anyone want to tell me what this is for h we have a zipper foot and i actually think this might be an invisible zipper foot but just looking at the indents it's a little bit different to any of the zipper feet i've used before and if it is an invisible zipper foot i am very excited because i love invisible zippers and and I normally just do them by hand or in a bit of a weird way that everyone always tells me off for because I've never bothered to buy one. Next we have I, which is my favourite foot, which is the overlooking or over edge foot. This one looks way more sturdy than the ones that I got with my modern day Janome, simply because the metal is like super thick and in the modern day ones they're actually made of wire. And I have a real habit because of so such thick fabrics of that wire bending out of shape or breaking quite easily. This one looks like it's going to work better. I am intrigued to see if it does, so we shall see. So I actually thought this was a ruffling foot when I first saw it, but according to the instruction manual, J is actually a basting foot, which I have seen variations of this in the past and again, never use them. I think I have some of my older machines. I don't understand why you wouldn't just use a normal foot for basting rather than this. This looks like it's got a bit more power to kind of speed through things maybe so we'll see if anyone has any experience using these please let me know in the comments down below maybe i've been basting my stuff wrong for years if so i will happily admit my mistakes <laughs> for k we have a chain stitch foot and when i read that i immediately flipped through the manual and realized this machine can do chain stitch guys and i am really really excited about that because i want to try it out but if you can make an entire cosplay just using chain stitch Oh, I hope so. Now that's an idea. L is a chain looper, which I again have never heard of before, but looking at the instruction manual, it looks like you use this to create the chain stitch. So we're going to have to have a play around and see if this one works. I also just love the fact that in 1975, they were making machines that could do straight stitch normally and then the old fashioned chain stitch as well. Like it's just a really good idea and a unique feature that certainly I've never seen on any modern day machine. So for M, we have a quilter, which I think is basically just a measuring bar. I've got a few of these with my other older machines but I've never actually had a chance to use them so maybe we'll have to wither a patchwork quilt just to get some experience with this and for N we have this weird little thing which is a blind hem stitch guide so that's interesting I don't know how to use this but it's a good thing I have the manual I've read through the instructions I'm feeling slightly confident so I'm going to plug this in and see if the light turns on make sure it doesn't explode on me and outside if it does and have soda to calm the electrical fire that is just a terrible idea don't use soda on an electrical fire do not take safety advice from me guys so another interesting thing the foot pedal also has a switch that's low and high i have seen this on other vintage machines before but this one is particularly cool so excited please work if it doesn't work i'm gonna have issues Nothing's exploded yet, so I think we're doing okay. We're gonna try pressing onto the pedal. It's not threaded up. I mean, I'm only on like a camping table and on my dog, I shake the table something nothing. See, powerful though. Okay, we can make this work. Really annoyed I don't have any like sewing machine oil. I'm gonna see if I can get some tonight so I can give her a proper clean up. She's not too dusty. That's the good news. A lot of these times with these machines they haven't been used in so long, they're just kind of disgusting. She looks like she's had a few stitches 
since being cleaned, but it's definitely nowhere near the worst I've seen. All right, let's thread her up. Okay, I said not that bad, but I just pulled this out of the bobbin thing, so uh, at least slightly worse than I thought. Yes. Right, she's all threaded up, so let's see if she sews. I have this scrap fabric. It is stretchy scrap fabric, but we're just gonna roll with it. Oh my god, that's beautiful. Did she reverse? I love her. So we've established not only does she work, but she works perfectly. And I haven't even oiled her and properly cleaned her yet. She's going to be amazing. I need to name her. I feel like because she's been Sweden, we should give her a Swedish name, but I haven't got any in mind. So any suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. And now to try making something on this sewing machine. I think I'm in need of a new dress. This pattern, if you like it, by the way, is available on both my Ko-Fi and my Etsy shop because it is graded. And please be excited for me here because this is the first graded pattern that I am releasing. It does cost £5 on Ko-Fi and that's plus whatever fees Etsy decides to add on over there because they can't just leave it the price I set for some reason. However, if you would like to make this for yourself and £5 seems a little bit steep, that is absolutely fine because I am having a soft launch of Patreon where I will be releasing one graded pattern every month from now on. So please check it out because this is the first month we are doing it and everything for all the different tiers that we will be getting in the future is just one pound so please do check it out i am very excited to be launching it and some feedback would be really really appreciated so the first thing i did was get the dress that i had patterned and cut out earlier and pinned up the sides I then realised I hadn't cut enough bias binding, so I cut some more, then went over to the machine and using the normal straight stitch, and yes, red thread because I don't have a lot of colour options yet, attached all that bias binding together. Happy with how it came out, I pinned the bias binding to the sleeves and neck of the dress before stitching those on too. These will get an underside of hand stitching later to keep everything neat and tidy, but for now we're not worrying too much about that. Then it was onto the dress sides, the only seams in this entire thing. Honestly, this is so easy, I would 110% recommend this for anyone who is wanting to do their first project because not only does it look nice, it was easy to sew and it's ended up being one of my favourite and most comfy shirts. So the dress is all stitched around and I was about to try doing an over edge stitch. I can't put the foot on because this is stuck and I'm, I've tried using a knife but I can't line a screwdriver and bends at work so we'll change it later. I think I can do an over edge stitch with this, it's just not going to be amazing. I also ran out of bobbin thread which is fine, gotta try winding it sometime. Oh my god this thing is rusty as it's not nice. It works clearly and we're going to have to use it. I am going to take one of these bobbins with me to the shops this evening, see if I can just make sure that the genome bobbins like fit and will be the same because really I don't want to be using something that's covered in rust in my machine. It's not ideal. We're going to use it for now and see how we go. So we overlocked using a basic zigzag, which is actually what the instruction manual recommends for knits anyway. So yay! Apparently we're doing this properly for once and honestly, it turned out great. Oh my gosh, guys. Some of you might know I was super sad to not be getting a vintage Benina as I tried to buy several and they all fell through. But honestly, I couldn't ask for more with this machine. And then it was just to pin and attach the bias binding around the base before I could relax and hand stitch for the rest of the day. And while I get on with that, let me tell you a little bit more about my Patreon launch. Firstly, if there is anything over there that you want to see, please let me know. Leave it in the comments down below. I am more than open for ideas and would love your suggestions. Ko-Fi won't be going anywhere and if you leave a donation over there, your name will still be embroidered onto my next project and for just one dollar you can get that with Patreon too. With this shirt, I definitely think it's probably the most practical thing that I have ever actually made. I used slightly thicker material than I ideally like, but even in hot weather, because of the flowy sleeves, it's actually really, really good. And because of the flowy sleeves, you have an almost cape-like feel to it, which I utterly love. Not to mention this has to be one of the easiest things ever. Only two seams and a bit of overlocking, and I can stitch the binding because I mean, I like to do that, but you really don't have to. So this pattern is going to be for my Patreons. Yay, please join. I am really looking forward to it and I cannot wait for people to try and make it themselves because this is honestly fantastic. Plus it's graded and this is my first time grading a thing so fingers crossed everything goes well but any issues please let me know either message me on Patreon, Instagram, Discord is probably the most reliable thing or just leave a comment down below and I'll see if I can get in touch and sort out whatever problem it is. Not gonna lie, incredibly nervous about this but hopefully this is going to be amazing and this is just the first of one of many easy makes that we can start doing together. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so my final thoughts on this sewing machine are simply amazing. I'm not even joking, I think this is one of the best machines that I actually own, and even when I get my fancy genome back, this one is never going to be back the way it is perfect. 
I had a little bit of trouble with the bobbin at one point, but I think it's just a little bit sensitive to cheeks, right? It's typical of me that I get a machine that only likes to eat the expensive stuff, but I think this is going to do me well. It's going to be perfect for cosplay. It's going to be perfect for making clothes. Hopefully it'll be perfect for quilts as well. I'm sorry we didn't get to see more of the different stitches on the feet, but I think I'm going to experiment with them as we go. Once I've oiled everything up and actually loosened into the screws that need to be loosened. Otherwise, please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to see more. I post videos every Wednesday, which is cosplay, vintage sewing and vintage sewing machine related content. We're probably going to be leaning into the cosplay quite heavy this year because I have plans, but that doesn't mean the other stuff is going to be taking a back seat. If you want to see more of my collection of vintage sewing machines, I actually recently did a whole tour where I was packing up all my machines while I was moving so that you can get a glimpse of them even if I'm not running through them. If you want more detail, I have a whole playlist of me unboxing various machines because I have a problem. So do check those out, the links for the Patreon and the pattern if you just wanted to get that instead of all in the description down below. And until next time guys, have a beautiful day. Bye!